Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Darkness. Uh, we are still doing the post game, and we're actually going to do the second um, important mission. A uh, few things to go over because I did skip one day, you know, of cut footage. I now have Flamethrower on my character, and we also have Gold Rank, which means we have uh, ex more room and storage and stuff. Um, but those Yay. are the only important. Flamethrower is basically like um, Thunder or Shockwave, except for it doesn't always miss, but it does have that line of sight thing. Wait, wait, you mean it doesn't always hit, <laughs> I think. You said it doesn't always miss. I'm, well, I meant, no, I meant, I meant it's like Shockwave never misses. Flamethrower is like Shockwave, except for it doesn't have the never misses thing. It doesn't always, you know, y you know, right. yeah, yeah. I know, I know what you meant. Just like, it was funny. Yeah. I thought it was funny. Anyway, yes, so, we will be going to... Well, well, uh, well you'll, it'll be explained real quick. Anyway, after you do one day worth of a random mission, whatever it is, I think I went to Steam Cave, um, it, it doesn't matter how many you do, you have to just do at least one day and then go to sleep. Um, that Mr. Mime will appear. We've never seen a Mr. Mime in town before. Mr. Mime, that thing freaking annoys me. He's my favorite Pokemon. He's just sta he's just standing there. Look at him. Well, so is all the other Pokemon. They're just standing there. No, this Bidoof's walking around. No, the the wor 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 Rumple and and the... Swellow is just flapping her wings. And Wurmple is think, intimidating Swellow. I think we have now like two um, Cyndaclaws. Oh, I noticed something. You notice that there's a worm and a bird hanging out with each other? Yes, yes. We've, that, I, we've discussed this several times. There was that fact. You made that observation. I just wanted to, like, I, I saw it again, so I figured we'd bring it back. Well, there up. was a whole conversation with them last time where Swallow is going to eat Wurmple in a few days, and then he's going to be dead. <laughs> and Wormple's, Wormple says, you know what? I ain't even mad. I'm okay well, with this. Their, their name is Team Tasty, so. <laughs> Team Tasty. <laughs> Uh, that's great. That's great. I forgot that conversation, though. So. Okay, so this um, this mission, unlike the other one, which well, it's kind of like the uh, guild gra graduation in that it does set things up. This won't be relevant for a while, but it's still a um, it's still good to just you, you have to do this anyway. If you want to if you want to go to the last three missions and finally get to wrapping up all of the story, you have to go through all of this. So you have to do this one. Anyway, there was supposedly a really great explorer. I think he said it was Scizor, but there was a great explorer, and it was Scizor. But yep. now he's been gone at the Frozen Isles, or Blizzard Island. And now that he mentioned that, we can actually go to Blizzard Island, which is our next dungeon. Oh, boy. Actually, that sounds pretty cold. How are we going to get there? We, I guess Lapras, but, like, it's it, technically it's further than the Hidden Land was. <laughs> Even though the Hidden Land is, I guess, through time. I guess the hidden layer would be like hidden in a dimensional portal or something. It's though. not really distance you have to think of. It's time. Because yeah. hidden land, you could feasibly, if you wanted to, you know, think about this, you could put the hidden land Anywhere. right next to the guild. Yeah. And you probably wouldn't be able to see it. Anyway, Blizzard Island. Um, this place is kind of tough, kind of tricky. Uh, first thing to mention right away, the music in this dungeon is actually a medley of remixes. It's actually from the um, uh, Blue Rescue Team and Red Rescue Team. It actually includes Mount Freeze Peak, Sky Tower, Mount Thunder, and Thunder Wave Cave in that order. So it's it's a kind of cool musical rendition. It doesn't have its own unique, um, obviously unique soundtrack, but it has a medley, which is, you know, I like it. Uh, there is recruiting allowed. There's 20 floors in this dungeon. There are rest stops, I think. I can't remember. Um, there are traps. The main type is ice. Um, okay, so Pokemon you can find Golduck, Meryl, Azumarill, Sneasel, Piloswine, Delibird, Smoochum, Vigoroth, or Vigorath, no, Vigoroth. Vigoroth, yeah. Uh, Zurel, Nosepass, Swablu, Cast Form, Snow Rut, and Piplup. Hmm. So you can find all of them. Uh, one thing to mention is this whole mission actually takes place over two dungeons, so this is actually really long because it's this, and then there's another one right after that's a decent length dungeon. So, but for now we're doing Blizzard Cave. Um, having, you know, Chimchar is definitely useful because of this fire type moves. But I will admit, compared to. Uh, Mystifying Forest, this dungeon is definitely more tricky. You do want to keep your guard up a lot more on this dungeon, because a lot of the enemies can... 
you know, be kind of tricky. And also, I found, I think I, at least on a, one of the attempts, because I did have to do, I think, two attempts on this, um, multiple monster houses in the same dungeon. It wasn't just, like, one. It was, like, a few, one right after another. Ooh, that's, that's actually, I find that really exciting. I mean, monster houses cool. really aren't that bad. They're just, you gotta be and careful. And they're, they're a boon for us. Getting all that experience will help. Yeah. Oh, that's the other thing. This dungeon is definitely a great place for experience. Not only is it long, but a lot of the dungeons, or a lot of the dungeons, a lot of the Pokemon, um, give a lot of experience off. So, like, 400 from a Meryl, but, and that's, like, a low-level Pokemon. Look at some of the higher ones. Because, like, we were getting 400 from some of the Pokemon in Temporal Tower. I think some of these Pokemon individually, I think at least one of them gave, gave me, like, a thousand. Just the one Pokemon, so... Definitely a great place for getting experience. Trickier dungeons too. There's a lot of those those different cutoffs that we're seeing with some of the some of the routes we're going through in this dungeon. Mm -hmm. And a warp trap. Warp trap. And it's a trap. And I'm gonna actually use roll call warp so I can get Pikachu over here. Nice. Oh, there's another one. Oh, what? what no. What? Are you going? Oh, oh, okay. Good call. I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> Go back that way. I would have gotten back the other way, and I probably would have had a harder time. <laughs> oh boy, that see that's why I'm not playing right now. See? Mega's playing, by the way. Yeah, there's flamethrower. <laughs> flamethrower doesn't miss. I know I did. I only had like flame wheel for a little bit, but it, I feel like Chimchar doesn't have any long range moves, so it was good to give him one, at least one move that was long range. Oh, Deli Bird, man. Hate that. Hate that thing. I think Deli Bird can sometimes heal you, too, though. He's nodding his head left and right, like, nah, 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 nah. I like Deli Bird, though, even though I don't think he's actually a good Pokemon to use, but. He's like Santa. Don't you like Santa? Except, except Deadly. Don't you like Deadly Santas? No. Oh, PowerPoint skill, Saber. Yeah. I find he's actually been using it a lot less than he did when he was in the hidden land for me. Maybe it's because <laughs> no, I'm not gonna finish that. Overused SpongeBob references. I think we used up No, we didn't pretty use sure up we used up them, but we used up most of them. I'm pretty sure we exhausted a lot of those SpongeBob references in Fire Emblem. We should move on to Hey Arnold references. That show is actually, I honestly find after watching a few of the episodes to be better than most of the other Nicktoons. I really am liking Hey Arnold the most. I see. I you never you don't like. I don't remember. I I, I remember. Wa I want used to watch it all the time. I just don't remember dude, a lot of it. Dude, it's like I I used to watch the Rugrats and Doug all the time, and dude, I just dude, can't remember. Beepers. That's all you need to know. Is beepers. Big Bob's beepers. <laughs> no, there's more to it than that, but that was the funniest. It's like, hey Helga. <laughs> oh my God, Big Bob is my hero. Hey, my name's Big Bob Pataki. <laughs> he, I, I would be entirely in favor of him have, making a spin-off show with just him. Big Bob. <laughs> Well, what are you Big Bob's mean? Beepers world. <laughs> I love this commercial, like, Big Bob's Beepers! Like, that song. I don't even remember, remember that. I just... Everything, I don't know, everything about that show, it's really funny. Even now, it's still funny. Whereas some of the other cartoons are... Like, Angry Beavers I like, but... Like, for example. But when you watch it now, it's like a lot of the humor is really random. Whereas, Hey Arnold didn't really rely on random humor... It relied on timing a lot with, you know, what the character said, and um, it, it had a really good use of comedic timing and just good character dialogue. Compared to who was that older guy? That Grandpa. Sounded, um, Italian. He was he's kind of balding, and he would always refer to Grandpa instead of by his first name as Grandpa. Hey, Grandpa. Oh, you mean um, Oscar? Yes, Oscar. Yes. Love Oscar. You keep the money. You keep the money. Kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> I love to pet the kitty. Pet, pet, pet. No. I... <laughs> oh, man. Great guy. Blizzard Island, by the way. Yeah, this is gonna... The future, the future home of Big Bob's Beepers Emporium. I almost want to say this is... I don't want to say it's the trickiest, but it's the most enduring dungeon so far, because, like I said, after you do this one, 
you get one right after, and technically you, you can leave and then come back later, but if you do them both in a row, there's like two dungeons. You know, before we've had like that two dungeon, like with Crystal Cave, for example, you had Crystal Cave and then Crystal Cave and then Crystal Crossing. But they were both like 15 floors. This is 20, and I think the next one is like 15. That's like, um, almost, it's like 45, no, not 45, 35. Still quite a few floors. How many floors is this? 20. I, 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 20. I said it was 20. I know. See, I don't... I have a habit of that. See, they say there's a rest stop, but I don't see or... I don't remember a rest stop in this. I remember it just being a straight 20 floors before you get to the end. Unless they count that as the rest stop, but that's a whole... That's like a point between two dungeons. Is that really considered a rest stop? I don't know. I, I'm not going to really worry about it. Oh, there is a there's a between point with Orkanger Scound Rock. You, you'll see. Just, just yeah, because that's what they're referring to. Yeah, but we, it's we but it's that. it's between this and a new dungeon as opposed to in the middle of the dungeon itself, which I, I thought that would be considered a rest stop. Ooh. Hmm. Like I, I, I know, know there's been times where it's been between like um, two different points in a dungeon, like Hidden Land, Hidden Highlands, but those are the same dungeon. This is two different dungeons. Yeah, honestly, are you looking on Cerebi? No, I, I always use Bulbapedia for this. Bulbapedia, yeah, they're being difficult. Well, the, the reason it's kind of like the Mario, it's the Mario Wiki. You know, Mario Wiki is not always. Well, the reason I use Bulbapedia is, consistent. quite frankly, it's it's easier to use. This is why, like, people always say, "Oh, I am I am DB for you know movie information." Maybe it's just me, but it's a lot more confusing to find information on there than it is Wikipedia. Wikipedia is much better organized, in my opinion, um, for finding information. So when I go to, like, Cerebi, Cerebi just doesn't... It seems more cluttered. And Ballpedia, where it, it's... I mean, it's not exactly not cluttered, but it seems like finding the information I need is easier and quicker to find with Ballpedia. So this yeah, is... The, this, I don't use... Well, oh, I was going to say, for all web designers or all information designers... Uh, Trying to figure out how best to use, uh, make your site so that it's navigatable and easy to access is definitely something you want to keep in mind. Yeah, I was about to say. I mean, <laughs> I don't get this this idea. You know, Wikipedia has the ease of access, where you know the search bar is the top right corner of Wikipedia. No, no, no. no. I mean, in terms search. of how they organize the information. For example, the the way they break it down. Um, specifically in terms of like when you look for actors who like what their movies were you go to film filmography they have a nice chart the way the chart's set up is is it makes logical sense you go to IMDB it, it just it feels more cluttered and I, and I feel if I did that part maybe people will get if I'm explaining it that way the way that the, specifically the movies for actors because when I look at the filmography on Wikipedia, I can easily find what I want. Where some pages don't have it, but for like big name actors, usually I can find exactly what I want. Go to when I've gone to IMDb, there's like this long page long list, and there's they're not ordered by date, or it's just it it's more cluttered. It feels at least. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, Wikipedia has it by year. Yeah. I think. And it's, just, and it's a nice little table chart, and it's just easy to find and, and makes sense. And for me, IMDb just is a little bit more cluttered. So I always go to Wikipedia for the, for movie stuff. And... So, I mean, I guess the question is, does IMDb mo have more accurate, up-to-date information well, I mean, than Wikipedia? But maybe, but I'm just saying, you know, if I want to quickly... And this is, again, why I said that uh, really information design is a really important thing to keep in mind. I'm going to go to I Wikipedia over IMDb because, for me, it's easier to find stuff on Wikipedia. Like, if I look for an actor, um, give me an actor. Um, Keanu Reeves. How do I spell that? K-E-A-N-U Reeves. Now, it's IMDb. Was I saying that or was I saying something else? IMDb is, yes, you were saying that. Okay, so, like, if you look at his, the filmography, instead of getting the nice chart that I got in, um, in Wikipedia, you get this law, you get this kind of list chart, and you, okay, you can, you can hide, it mentions the actor, producer, and stuff, if I look at the actor, I don't... Oh, oh, wait, wait, look, PP0D linked Pikachu's move. Yeah, that was one thing that was, uh, I'll have to relink it, but that was one thing that was annoying, is that trap. Um, so, okay, it, it is in order, technically, by date, but it makes, 
but for me it makes more sense to do it by the first occurrence, not the last occurrence. And I don't know. I guess it's not that cluttered. It just it it doesn't. It feels more cluttered to me. And the way that Wikipedia has it, like all being in a, a square chart, looks nicer. Maybe I'm just being picky and stupid. I don't know. It's good for trivia questions because you want to know the order in which some of the movies appeared in. Because that would have helped with us, yeah. with me and my mom, because we do team trivia every Monday. But well, what was some yeah. questions you got wrong? Oh, it was we were had we had to order. Um, oh, what was it? What was it? What was it? I think we had to order um, appearances, um, of movies made by a certain actor. I think it was um, Johnny Depp. Ah, uh, maybe. What were some of the, what were the movies? Um, I know Edward Scissorhands and um, Dead Man's Chest were two of them. We got those right, and I think it was the other two movies. What were, do you remember um, those? I can't remember. Um, I can't remember. They were obscure. They they were they were way early in his career, his U.S. career at least. Yeah, I couldn't remember the other two. Um, yeah. But um, my mom recognized one of them, but she didn't recognize the other one, and they were kind of close in date. Mm -hmm. And so, like, having a ordered set like Wikipedia has would help in something even as trivial as that. I guess, I guess my, the main to sum up my point on that is with Wikipedia having the square chart makes it look easier to the eyes in terms of being able to, you know, figure out what you want. So, it, it, and I took an I took an information design class. I took you know I did a lot of that for like you know cause it's, uh, graphic design, just design in general, and trying to figure out how best to organize your information so that it's appealing to the viewers. To me, I feel Wikipedia does a better job at that, at least by look. But then again, you know some people that might not matter. I just for me, I, Wikipedia's setup is a little bit more kinder to the eyes. And figuring things out. It's not really a big deal, but it is it is something that it is something I feel like people do take for granted how information is designed in general. It's um I, I, one thing that always baffles me for anyone that, who any college students out there, never ever ever do a PowerPoint and and this is less information design, this is a little bit more graphic, but it still involves information. Never do a PowerPoint presentation and have your words be the same color as the backdrop. Or someone like did oh, red, goodness. red, blue, and white text with against a flag, and it was like, why would you ever think that was a good idea? If you ever do that, you get at least do a stroke. Yeah, be around the letters. I mean, just be conscious of the fact that you're trying to get people quickly to understand this information. Design it, and don't worry too much about being fancy. Design it in the simplest way possible, so that they, while still looking good, so that they can get the information. That's the major point. And oh, anyway, I remember. I remember I had one class. I had a technical presentation class my first year of college, and we had three or four different people use clip art. They just stuffed clip art. Onto their powerpoints. I mean, it's great. And sometimes I take for granted the fact that being someone who's go who did a lot of those types of classes, I take for granted the fact that to me it just seems like common sense, but to other people it just I guess it isn't because to me I worry more about trying to perfect stuff like that, and then I'm looking at people who go into a powerpoint and they're just everywhere. There's like it's like um what was the website that had really bad GeoCities GeoCities websites. You don't remember those? Is that like the Google Sites kind yeah, of thing? Really bad old um, web, I think not really Flash, but they had like bad sites back in the day that was all colorful and they had all these GIFs all around and it was just really gaudy looking stuff. Hey, is there like a website we can go to to just look at funny looking web pages? I don't know, you said he's no longer. Kind of like a gag, like a four, like a nine gag, like a, a funny a funny website where we look at old stuff Just look like up, that. like, some major political websites or anything. There's some really, like, well-known websites or, like, for, like, major companies or stuff that are really badly designed. Um, that said, Pokemon. Oh, my. <laughs> look at that. Look at this floor. That's why I used it, because I didn't want to deal with something like this. Oh, that's just, that's brutal. <laughs> How many rooms is that? That's, uh, yeah. let's see, 15 rooms. Yeah, I know we haven't been really focusing too much on this dungeon, but there isn't too much to say. We didn't see any monster. Did you, were there any monster houses that you ran into? I think in the next one. I, I remember uh, one. I think there was in the first attempt in this one, but I didn't so far. Okay. 
Because I remember one attempt at, at Temporal Tower, I had two. Mm -hmm. I was excited because I had two monster houses, and I completely owned both of and them. Then the and then I lose the Dialga, so go figure. Yeah, I, I, I do apologize to people who would rather me focus on talking about the game, but there's not... If there's not much to talk your, your about... College, your collegiate career is at stake, guys. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to help you, man, with your life. We're trying to make you have... It's like, watch Pokemon, learn life lesson. <laughs> what better... It's be best way to, to learn Pokemon. And there it is. Wow. Crevice Cave, which... Yeah. That looks scary. <laughs> so, yeah, next time we'll be going to this next dungeon. Uh, Crevice Cave. Watery crevices. Yes.